If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at the interior of MS Brazil. But before that, this video is brought to you by Farmer Ben and Nigel Lincoat. Thank you for being Farmer Barons. So the interior of MS Brazil map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for PC players only. Let me read you a little bit of the description. A region based on several areas of the interior of the state of Mateo Grosso do Sol, with a small town and a highway that crosses the map with small, medium, and large fields. This map includes 95 purchasable plots of land, 45 fields, several cell points, several productions, new products, a biogas plant, sawmill, mining, and collectibles. All farmhouses and other houses in the city can be individually removed by cutting a plate with a chainsaw behind each one. Also, a little bit of word of warning by the map author, and we will be observing this when we load the map. I recommend starting the map with only necessary mods without the DLCs or other mods that add new fill types. This can change the mining products of dirt and sand. Later, you can activate those mods if you wish after you have saved the game once. Now, this map also has 16 required mods. They are the Voltra T Series CVT South America, Brazilian Cow Barn, Condor 800 AM18, Pack. Cario Sierra, the Scantia P310, New Holland TC59, Small House BR, Silo Shed Agronopolis, Lizard F350, BR Warehouse for Grain Sales, Brazilian Fence Pack, Lizard Pentaline, Pack of Fences, BR Metal Shed, Vegetal Coal Factory, and Gas Station BR. Let's go ahead and load on in. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, but not straw harvest. Not today, because we're taking straw harvest out. We're taking premium and platinum expansion out as well. We're also removing pumps and hoses, as well as. Where is it? The farm production pack. So that should remove everything here that is going to add an additional fill type to the map. And the reason we are doing this is because of the fact that the way Giants works with fill types is, and this is a little bit of a layman's description. Fill types go into an array, and as such, that array then will get ID numbers assigned to each fill type. The fill type ID numbers are not hard-coded, so you can't always guarantee dirt or sand or anything else has a specific ID associated with it if you have a map that includes a lot of fill types or mods that include a bunch of extra fill types. So by trying to limit the number of fill types, then the map author can be reasonably assured that the piles of dirt and sand are going to appear as they should, and therefore you'll have the experience you're expected to have on this map. Now we've already loaded into the map, but I do want to go into my map loading spiel with respect to... If you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the main farm is completely empty of buildings as well as completely empty of vehicles. You will also need to buy the land. Now we are loading this map up in new farm mode. And also if you happen to load this map up with a low end system like I did, I used a test system that has low end integrated graphics from A&D, then you will find that you are going to get a nice solid 60 FPS on this map 
without any issue whatsoever. Now when we load into the map, we need to start here at the vehicle dealer. And I want to point out a couple things. One, someone really needs to be a little bit more careful with the money because they're just leaving money lying around. Oh, what do you know? That's one of the collectibles. There are 10 bills that you're just gonna find lying around on the ground and also 12 coins just lying around. And those are the 22 custom collectibles that are available here on this map. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. We go ahead and take a look at our lands overview. You see we start by owning farmland ID 17. That is gonna be the main starting farm. This map only has one farm on it and that is gonna be farmland ID 17. You can buy that in any alternate game mode for $163,489. Now let's, let's, let's just make our way out of here. Um, I don't want to hear the shop music. So we'll just position ourselves over here and go back to this PDA view. We do have all the standard crops available to us on this map. In addition, we also have millet added as an additional crop. Now, of course, we don't have platinum or premium expansion enabled here. And that is that way we can be reasonably assured that the heaps are going to be exactly how they're expected to be with respect to the map author's wishes if you live this map up and you do have additional fill types and the ground heaps that you're going to see during this map tour are not the same it is a result of you having those mods that are introducing those additional fill types active when you loaded the map for the very first time we take a look at our farmland lease screen Farmland lease screen shows show, show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We're then going to be able to cross-reference our farmland with our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And as you can see, we have fields that range in size from less than one hectare all the way up to 26 hectares in size. We also have a custom growth calendar here on this map, and we are starting in the month of February, which as it's been pointed out to me, you're not technically starting in February, but with respect to the fact that in South America, their summer is our winter, our winter in North America, our Northern hemisphere is the Southern hemisphere's summer. Therefore, autumn is basically the equivalent of February in the Northern Hemisphere. So therefore, that is why it is showing up here in the crop counter. Because when it's autumn here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's as if it's February in the Southern Hemisphere. With respect to our prices screen, you can see we do indeed have the ability to sell most, but sadly not all the crops available to us. Olives is not going to be available for sale unless you put down your own sell point. But you could plant olives because olives does have a harvest and plant season on this custom crop counter. And it is also listed here in the listing of crops here on the PDA. So it would be nice to have seen olives also have an available sell point. Now with respect to our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk. We do have the ability to sell all of those, as well as our grass, hay, and silage, and all of our base game production items. We do indeed have the ability to sell those. We even have the ability of selling olive oil, even though we do not have the actual ability to produce olives, which will then ultimately make that olive oil. With respect to lime, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime. No, sorry, that was a misspoken statement we have the ability to sell lime at the cement production plant and we also have the ability to sell our stones down at the mine now this map has an abundance of custom productions we have millet which is a custom crop and then we have soybean oil uht milk canned corn canned olives oddly enough 
yogurt, tomato sauce, ketchup, pallets, carrots, watermelon, cabbage, soy milk, maintenance tools, mining equipment, rebar, vehicle parts, gas, wooden beams, long boards, cement, concrete blocks, trash, chocolate milk, concrete beams, concrete slabs, bricks, concentrated herbicide and liquid fertilizer, dirt, sand, and packets of charcoal. With respect to our starting fleet, all of our vehicles are owned, none of it is leased, and is all very well maintained. We do have 20 cows at the start. They are over at our starting farm. We also have contracts available on this map. We do not own any production chains. And as I mentioned, we do have 22 collectibles, 10 bills, and 12 coins that are going to be scattered around the map. We take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Valtra T280 CVT chip. That is going to be a modded tractor that is custom with the map, as well as the Valtra Valmet medium tractors. We have a Scantia P410 semi-truck, and that is going to be another mod that is a required mod. We have the TC59 New Holland Harvester that is also listed as a required mod, as well as the F350 automatic pickup truck. We have the dry body trailer for the Scantia, as well as our Superflex 25 foot header for our New Holland Harvester and the eight row corn header for our Harvester. We have the Rebel Classic 600T disc harrow. We have the Pinta 13 row planter that is also one of the required mods. We have the Condor AM18 Jetco sprayer, again, a required mod. The Breedall K105 fertilizer and lime spreader. We have the transport tank and the animal transport carrier for the Skintia truck, also required mods. The N40BX header trailer and the normal body for our F350 pickup truck. Now, with respect to mods and DLCs. In addition to the various equipment required mods that are going to be listed here, this map does indeed have some custom vehicles, implements, and products. We have a modded Case 721G front loader, or wheel loader, sorry. We have a Farmall C-Series and Farmall 1066 Hydro. Now, these are far, uh, part of the Case 100 Years Pack, but they're also listed here as interior of MS Brazil mods. We have the ability to buy pallets of pallets. We have the ability to buy maintenance tools, mining equipment, rebar, vehicle parts, gas, cement, concentrated liquid, fertilizer and herbicide, silage additive, and tree saplings. Those are all custom to this map. Now I go, want to go ahead and dive into our production chains because this map has several custom production chains. We have the ability to make charcoal by bringing wood or logs to a production plant, the charcoal factory, and that is going to make packets of charcoal. There are two of those pre-placed on the map. We have a standard biogas plant available to us. We have a sawmill and the sawmill is going to take logs and produce planks wood chips, wooden beams, long boards, and pallets. Our bakery is real interesting the way it's set up. We have two recipes for bread, cake, and chocolate cake, and each of these are going to require gas or not require gas. And those that require gas are going to produce slightly more output than those that do not require gas. And they're also going to output trash. So here, for example, bread, three flour, 0.4 milk, 0.2 pallet, 0.4 gas is going to make two and a half bread and a half trash. Three flour, 0.4 milk, 0.2 pallet is only going to make two flour or two bread and 0.5 trash. So we have that mix for cake and we also have that mix for chocolate cake. Cement production is going to require lime, dirt, pallets, and maintenance tools to produce cement. Down at the mine, we're going to have maintenance tools, mining equipment, 
vehicle parts and water in order to make stone, dirt, and sand. Or to produce lime, we're going to need stones and maintenance tools in order to then produce lime. Our brick and precast factory is going to take water, cement, dirt, sand, and pallets in order to make concrete blocks and trash. We have also a recipe for bricks, concrete slabs, and concrete beams. And these two concrete products are going to also require rebar. Our flour factory is going to be wheat and pallets, barley and pallets, oat and pallets, sorghum, corn, or soybean and pallets. And all of those are going to produce flour. The dairy is going to be able to make butter, cheese, chocolate, and two different types of yogurt, a sweet yogurt and a strawberry yogurt. We have our spinnery that is also going to require pallets. Our tailor shop is going to require pallets. And then our woodworking facility, well, it's going to take long boards or planks and make pallets and wood chips. Or we have the ability to take long boards or planks and make furniture and wood chips. Now this map does have a custom soil map. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like being applied to these fields. We can see to the north, we've got an abundance of loam with a little bit of loamy sand and silty clay and a wee bit of sandy loam mixed in. To the south, pretty much the same story continues. Although right here, just around field 14 and 13, we have the largest collection of sandy loam on any one particular field. But overall, we've got a kind of an interesting mix of soil types, but the soil types should be pretty good with respect to overall yield. Now we've made our way over here to our starting farm, which again is gonna be located right here at Farmland ID 17. We were over here at the vehicle shop, which is located right here when we started in. So we basically went down the street and then came into this lane. And now we are here at the gate. Coming into the gate, we have our cow pasture over here to our left. I believe we're gonna find out that these are going to support 400 cows in this pasture. And then we have our Brazilian farmhouse. Oddly enough, our Brazilian farmhouse is the only building at this farm if you are in farm manager mode or start from scratch. We have our sleep trigger and our wardrobe trigger here in the left bedroom. And then the right room is going to be for our bathroom. We have our lizard pickup truck. We have our two tractors and our straight truck. We have the other bed modules located over here to our right. We have our silo system located right here. With our dump and fill points. And then we also have our harvester and other machinery stored inside of here as well. Now, everything you see here at the farm can be sold. We have a small pile of lime also stored here at the starting farm. Here we have our cow pasture. So we have our food and water troughs. We have our animal delivery point, 400 cows of which we have 20 at the start. We have our milk trigger and our slurry trigger here as well. And that is pretty much the starting farm. Now, as you have re maybe remembered in the description, there was a statement about removing houses by cutting down a board or a plank or a pole behind it. So if we cut this down after we own this land, then this building will vanish and we'll have the ability to basically customize this area and do whatever we want with. 
Now I want to come back here to the farm. I want to go into build mode because I want to show off some of these ground textures. We do have a fair bit of ground textures available to us here on this map. But what we're going to find is we have an abundance of dirt textures. And from this menu, they all do kind of look alike. So here's dirt number one, dirt number two, dirt number three. And you can see they're all very, very similar, but they do have slightly different textures associated with them. That does not end with our dirt because we have even more dirt. And let me just show you here. We've got another dirt texture here and here, there, 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 and there. So I wanted to point these out because if you just look at the build mode, they look all the same, but we have some custom dirt textures, tire marks, some mud puddles, more mud puddles and tire marks, kind of deeper ruts. These are using the new 3D texturing. Then we have tire marks in this direction. And we have some tire marks going that direction. So really cool. I like these custom dirt textures. And that's one of the reasons kind of why I wanted to show it off. Let's take to the skies a little bit and just kind of take a little bit of a look around. Again, as I mentioned, all of the buildings here at the farm, including the farmhouse, can be sold. The fencing can also be removed here as well. So we are going to give the map a full point there. We're also going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we do have 13 custom productions or 13 productions overall available to us here on this map. Now, these are what I would believe would be um, anthills, and we can cut this pole down, and I believe what's going to happen is these anthills are going to also go away. We're going to kind of avoid the town area for now, and I want to come over here to the northwest corner because we do have a heap of additional fill type located over here. We have two fields separated by a very narrow road and the road is pretty much the same color as the ground. So that is going to be a little bit hidden there, but we have fields one and two located over here. We have a house and again, a pole to remove it. And here we have a pile of sand. Now, I want to give you an example of why you want to remove DLCs when you load this map up. Because I just for fun loaded this map up with all of the DLCs activated. And this was not a pile of sand. This was a pile of dirt. Now, with this map, with there being dirt and sand as custom fill types, that might not be that big of a deal. But it's potential that if you loaded this map up with even more mods that had fill types, that this wouldn't be a pile of sand. It wouldn't be a pile of dirt. It could possibly be a pile of straw. And that would have a serious possible impact on your overall gameplay here at this map. So if that is not a pile of sand for you, then it's probably because you have some DLCs or other mods activated that are including some additional fill types. As we move across the northern part of the map here, we can take a look across all the way to the south. While we do have some rolling fields or rolling hills on the fields, the map does not have a whole lot of heavy inclines, so it shouldn't be too difficult to do field work with slightly underpowered machinery. With respect to our scoring system, we're going to take a quarter point off with respect to the ability to buy or sell all of our custom crops, animal outputs, production points, and such, because we do not have the ability to sell olives. Now, I do know that, of course, you could take those olives and 
process them further into another product that you could sell, but it would be nice to see olives available for sale. Here we have two of our charcoal kilns. So we have our pallet spawn point, we have our dump point, and we have our wood cell trigger there. We have an activation icon there for light, and we have our interactive icon right there to manage our production. So we have one there and one over here. We have our sawmill located right here. So we have our fill pipe for our wood chips. We have our dump station for our logs, our wood cell trigger. Our interactive icon. And over here we had a heap of wood chips as well. And I would be willing to bet that our pallets are going to spawn underneath that roof. So we make our way down the eastern side of the map. We're going to come here to the sign that we had on the preview image. And then to the south of that, we do have some more fields. We have some other areas here like this. I'm not really calling these farm areas. There's just kind of a shed and a house, but maybe, maybe you could have a small farm located there. Our starting farm, which is located right over there. With a security checkpoint and oh my maybe a bus that's being checked out now as we make our way here into town there's a whole whole lot going on we have of course all of these houses many of these we can buy and of course clear the land areas So here we have a grain cell point. And then this is going to be, I believe, a lime. Animal food, not a lime, because we can't buy lime here. This is an animal food purchasing station. This is going to be a sell point for building materials, clothing store, and a pizzeria. So here we're going to be able to sell dirt and sand. We have our pizzeria and then our other store. Done forgot the name of it. Our clothing store. Uh, farming net an ISP that's pretty neat our spinnery so we have our spawn point our interactive icon and our dump point for pallets and inputs. We then also have our tailor shop right behind that. We have our dump point, our loathing spawn point. Here at our tailor shop. We have our supermarket. 
recyclable materials and our vehicle shop. So our vehicle shop is going to be located right there. That's where we started. Nice little neon going on here. We have a sell point for recyclable materials, AKA trash. And let's go back here to our shop. So I don't think we really talked too much about our triggers here. We have our shop trigger. So let's go ahead and get our Mahindra. We do have a custom vehicle shop here, camera. I like it when maps do this. And we have our dealer trigger. And our dealer trigger is going to be in this bay right here. So you will have to bring your vehicles into this bay area in order to do service on those. And we've got a pretty decent sized area here in the parking lot for our vehicles to spawn. As we continue our way down through this row, we have our warehouse for selling grains and our logistics distribution center. And the logistics distribution center is gonna accept just about everything, including all of the DLC products if you happen to have those activated. Right, so we've got a little animation going on with our forklift. And there we have the dump station at loading bay four. So as we make our way south, we're gonna come across another production point. But before we get there, we have our animal dealer. With animated cows. And here we have a cell point. No, buy point, sorry. We have a buy point for our slurry and manure and we have our bale cell point. This is gonna be our flower factory. So we have our dump point for our pallets. We have our dump point for our grain. We have an output pipe for our, one of our fill types, I guess flour. So we're gonna have bulk flour down here. And we made our way down to another grain cell point, the grain warehouse. Right there. And now we're coming across the southern edge of the map. And we're going to make our way over here to the mine. And the mine is where we're going to find even more sand and stone piled up. So we have stone in these two piles and then a whole heap and load of sand located here, here, and around the corners. A nice little dozer making his way up and down the incline. And again, when I loaded this map up with various DLCs activated, this pile was sand, those piles were stone, but this pile was dirt. Interesting enough. So again, you might have some interesting things going on. So here at the mine, we have our dump station. We have a bulk build type going on right there. Well, that is very interesting. 
That's where our lime is no doubt will be supposed to be coming out. We have our another dump point there for products. More. This is going to be our stone crusher, I believe. Cement production and our mine. So what would be really, really super, super awesome is, so here we have our pallet for our cement, our interactive icon, our pallet dump station, and our cement plant dump station. And this is going to be part of our mine. It would be nice to have these delineated in some way. Maybe a little bit more denoted as to what's going on. As to what maybe goes in here as opposed to what goes in here. But I do believe what we're going to see here is our mining tools and our um, maintenance tool crates for there. Then our brick and precast factory with our dump point there. Our dump point for our brick and precast inputs. And our dump point for water. And while we don't really have an indicator icon, I'm going to go out on a limb and say our pallets are going to spawn underneath this roof. Here we have our biogas plant. So we have two digesters. We have our dump point for our slurry. And we have our fill pipe for our digestate. Make our way to the north. We are going to pretty much conclude this here at our final production. And I believe this is gonna be our dairy. Yeah, so we have our dump point here. Our interactive point and our pallet spawn point. Now, with respect to our scoring system, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point with respect to buildings and ground textures where probably are using the new texturing technique. We do have some buildings here that are basically using the flat textures. Overall, not too big of a deal. That's why we're only taking a quarter of a point off. With respect to triggering interactive areas being clearly marked, I feel like we're also going to maybe take a quarter point off there just because there are a few missing indicator icons as to exactly where various pallet points are going to spawn. I feel pretty confident with the fact that they are going to be spawning under those roofs. But again, it would be nice to have seen some indicator giving us more of a visual clue as to exactly what's going on there. So that's going to wrap this map up with a score of 4.25 out of 5. I really do like this map. I like what the map author has attempted to do. I like the custom production. I like the mining aspect that has been also added to this map for a little bit of additional overall gameplay. But it is going to be essential that you are very careful with respect to what you put on this map initially when you load up for the very first time that way you can be sure that the heaps of sand and stone that are going to spawn in here are properly spawned in let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map custom productions the overall layout and such and until next time happy farming